And no, I am not pro-Hitler or pro-Nazi or pro-National Socialist. Look, I'm not for any kind of socialism, let alone national socialism. I believe in freedom and liberty and very limited government. So no, this is not pro-Nazi or pro-Hitler or racist or anything. That has nothing to do with this issue. The issue is whether or not six million Jews died in gas chambers and were subsequently cremated, what we know as the Holocaust. That's the issue. It's an issue of whether these historical events took place or not. So, you know, he's looking at this objectively with no bias at all. Calls the Jews the synagogue of Satan, puts up the quote from Martin Luther saying to burn their homes down, their synagogues down. But he's just objective, just totally objective, like the Nazis were. You know, and the fact that he uses Nazi propaganda film tactics and actually scenes from the films and things, using the exact same scenes, the exact same audio and everything, uh, exact same tactics as the Nazi film The Eternal Jew, uh, he uses the same things, but he's not for the Catholics or for the Nazis. He just uses what they did. See? It's nonsense. But let's continue. Before we get into it, let me say this. Obviously, Jews died in World War II. Obviously, there were Jews that were executed in World War II. Obviously, Hitler hated Jews. I'm not disputing that fact for one second, that Hitler and the Nazis hated Jews or that the Jews were rounded up and put into forced labor camps and that they were put on trains and, and taken to camps where they were forced to work, etc. Lots of people died in World War II. Okay, now remember that for later because you're going to see he comes out later and basically says that the whole thing of Jews being executed is a lie. He's a liar. But let's continue watching. Okay, in this next scene, we're going to actually see him talking about 2,000 Jews being gassed and things. And watch him as he actually laughs, as he's saying about gassing 2,000 Jews. He goes, <laughs> he laughs. Watch this. So why would you make a gas chamber that holds 2,000 people, gas 2,000 people at once? What kind of a sick individual would laugh at people being gassed to death? Pretty disgusting. But let's continue. And the supposed eyewitnesses, of which there are very few, the eyewitnesses will say, oh yeah, we threw three or four bodies into the oven at one time, and it was done in 20 minutes. No, that's not reality, folks. <laughs> so it's not reality to go with eyewitness reports. You know, somehow it's, it's, it's bad and horrible and evil and everything to, to listen to people who were actually there, you know. And what he tries to do, part of the argument here that Anders Snake comes up with, he says, you see, if you call up a modern crematorium and you ask them their technique, you know, it takes them like an hour and a half, two hours to cremate a body. And so they, they would have to be doing four every 15 or four every hour, according to the Holocaust type numbers. And, and that would be, you know, impossible because it'd be one every 15 minutes and blah, blah. Uh, yeah, but you see, the modern crematoriums are doing them out of, out of respect for the family. Obviously, they can't burn bodies in mass. They can't just be like, let's chuck 10 people in there and burn them. They can't do that. They get sued. So to compare a modern crematorium to what was going on in Nazi Germany is ridiculous. Absolutely absurd. This is not scientific. It's not logical. All right, but... When was Andersnake ever logical? So, but let's continue. 700,000 dead bodies were supposedly dug up by hand and then cremated in giant, you know, outdoor fires and on giant outdoor barbecues. These people are cremated. Of course, it's impossible to cremate anyone or anything on a barbecue grill, but that's the story that a lot of people are telling. Again, see the little Jesuitical tactic. See this little spirit of a liar, this, this devil spirit that infests Stephen Anderson. This little spirit that says, you know, uh, they were burned in outdoor fires and barbecues. And, of course, we know that that's ridiculous because you can't burn somebody on a barbecue grill. Huh? Uh, okay, did you ever hear of a funeral pyre? Many, many, many pagan cultures build wooden big things and stuff and they and they put dead bodies on there and they burn them 
but you can't burn bodies, you know, lots of bodies outside on a funeral pyre, you know. But he changed it to barbecue barbecue grill, you know, to make you think of something in your backyard to, to give you a picture in your mind so that you go, yeah, that is ridiculous, you know. I mean, it's absolutely absurd, these tactics that he's using. And, of course, uh, what about the martyrs, you know, the uh, saints of Jesus Christ who were burned at the stake outside without being cremated in a little oven or something like that? Yeah, I guess maybe he'll eventually start coming out for his Catholic masters and denying that Christians were burned at the stake as well. I mean, you're, you know, you're doing it with Jews. You might as well just go ahead and, you know, throw Christians in with them. Absolutely absurd. But let's continue with the next one. That's referring to the fact that supposedly the goal was to kill all the Jews and to cremate them all. That's the whole burnt offering. So my point is this. If there was no mass cremation of millions and millions of Jews, then can you really call it the Holocaust anymore? <laughs> That's a stupid point. I mean, give me a break. Well, because, you know, Holocaust means a burnt offering or, you know, a whole burnt offering or something like this. Um, then, you know, because they weren't all burnt, we really shouldn't call it the Holocaust anymore. <sighs> you know, the Holocaust has come to mean, you know, in our modern use of the term, yes, it means there was a, a burnt offering there, a whole burnt offering. But the fact is, in the English world, the English-speaking world, you say Holocaust, people think of something where a lot of people are killed genocide, a mass genocide. And that's what that was over there. Uh, would they have burned all the bodies eventually? Well, probably they would have, but they were stopped. God stopped the whole thing from, from coming down because if he hadn't, the, the Nazis would have killed all the Jews in Europe. And you know, it's kind of interesting because in your New Testament, Jesus Christ talks about how that the days would have to be shortened in this time of Jacob's trouble and it, so that some flesh would be saved. So this philosophy, this very dangerous philosophy right here is going to come back again. And it's already being drummed up. It's already being, the, the fires are being stoked, so to speak. But let's continue. Now again, we're not saying that Jews didn't die in World War II and that Jews were not even murdered in World War II. Lots of people were murdered in World War II. There were all kinds of casualties on both sides. And, and the thing about it is that just because people were rounded up and put in forced labor camps, that does not mean that they were systematically exterminated and cremated to the tune of six million. So, you know, see, he starts out by saying, oh, there, you know, there were Jews. And he's like, oh, there were Jews that were killed, but uh, it, it can't be six million. You know, it's, it's just, it's not there and things, uh-huh, sure. And he actually comes out here in a little bit. I'm not sure which clip it is. I have the thing cut up because, you know, let me just explain because I get this a lot. People say, you're not playing the whole thing. No, I'm not playing the whole thing because these people, I, in my experience as a preacher over many years now, I have seen how false prophets will purposefully inject a lot of other information to get your mind off of lies that they just told. And it's very, very, very difficult to go through and to watch a whole video because you have to constantly stay focused on those lies and pick them out and say, okay, and then listen a little bit. Oh, there's another one. Boom, pick it out. And to get rid of all that filler material where they will come and they will say other things and they might even throw some truth in there and then they'll tell a lie and then they'll quick throw some other truth in. That's why I do what I do. Okay, the part of my ministry is to expose false prophets and liars like this. Right? That's why I don't recommend this to everybody out there. Uh, you, there's this thing, oh, we have to be fair and, and, and balanced and watch both sides, look at both sides of the argument. No, not if it's an error. Not if it's something that you know is wicked and know is wrong. And let me just say this. If you study your Bible, anybody can come away from reading this Bible seeing that the nation of Israel is restored at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, Jacob being Israel, for how many times this has been here, but uh, Jesus Christ sets up his, his kingdom in Jerusalem in Matthew chapter 25, and he judges from Jerusalem, and then the millennial kingdom is set up, and Jerusalem is the capital city of that millennial kingdom. And you, so you see Israel being lifted up at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, but yet Revelation 17 
through to the first part of chapter 19, you see Mystery Babylon, the Roman Catholic whore, being brought down. And again, you know, you'll get anti-Semites like this or Tex Mars, and they'll say Mystery Babylon is Jerusalem, it's, it's Israel. Okay, well then how does God set, up, set it up as he has torn it down? And he, you know, talks about with Babylon, there are other scriptures that talk about that it's, it's never more inhabited again after that, after it's destroyed. It's become the habitation of, of you know, unclean spirits and things like that. It's, it's, so you see, in the end times, Israel is exalted, the Vatican, Roman Catholicism is destroyed. So when I see somebody saying, no, it's actually the opposite, you know, it's, we'll cover up for the Vatican. We'll cover up and we'll say there was no connection between the Vatican, the Catholics, and the Nazis. We'll cover that up. And we'll, we'll cover up the fact that there are other Catholics coming out, like that archbishop we watched earlier, saying that the Vatican or the, the Holocaust was a lie. We'll cover that up. We won't talk about that. And we won't talk about a lot of other things that the Vatican does. But we will attack the Jews. See, they're doing things in reverse from what the Bible says would happen. So when I see somebody that does that, I simply say, they're not trustworthy. I'm not going to waste my time on them. And the reason I'm, you say, well, then why are you doing this? Well, very simple. Because I want to see this guy brought down. Because, you know, and there again, I need to answer this question I've gotten from people. They say, why don't you spend your time on Rick Warren or Joel Osteen or whatever else? Because he's not in my crowd. Okay. This little lying devil here, he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. A wolf in Bible-believing clothing. He's supposedly a King James Bible-believing preacher. And that's why I'm going to go after him. I'm going to go after somebody like that. I'm going to hunt him down and I'm going to expose him for the snake that he is. The lying, thieving wolf that he is. That's why I'm spending my time like this. Because if we don't come out as Christians and expose people like Stephen Anderson, then we are going to get labeled as being of the same mind as that. They're going to come out and they're going to say, oh, you're that anti-Semitic guy that says that the president should be killed and that, and that uh, sodomites should be killed and all this other stuff. Hey, I'm not part of that group right there. I am not aligned with Stephen Anderson. So don't try to, to yoke me up with him. He's not in my camp. <laughs> he's, not in, he's not saved. And I'm going to show you that in the next video uh, after this one is done. But well, let's continue here.